Hey guys, and welcome into another video. Today we're going to be doing another mock draft. Today we're going to be doing another 12 team, but it is going to be PPR, and I brought some homies with me. Um, if you are unfamiliar, which you probably shouldn't be because this is like the leading podcast debut ever on ASU's radio, but um, I got my boys Griffin and Miller here. Uh, we're pretty much, we pretty much started a fantasy football radio show last year. Um, we're doing it our third year coming up in the fall, so definitely be on the lookout for that. But I brought the boys here so we keep our fantasy football juices going. And we're going to be doing a mock draft. That way we can get multiple opinions, different spots, and just kind of go. So, boys, how you feeling? I'm ready to go. Um, I'm always good at drafting. I got, Although I got second in our league the last two years, I always come out in the draft solid. Don't usually have to make many trades. Miller, Miller okay. how you feeling, buddy? I don't know how to follow that one. Um, I'm going to say, you know, I really haven't thought about fantasy football at all until this moment right now. So this is all coming off the hip. So hopefully – it's all right. All right. That, I, it's just all random for our draft spots, so we're going to figure that out right now. Just don't give me number one. <laughs> all right. It's, it's draft, loading. Yeah, draft's loading. So um, if you guys are new to this one, there's, like, a, a full, like, thing you can check out. There's a draft board on the top and stuff like that. But, pick number um, three, baby. You got pick three. I got pick ten. I'm, Miller's I'm on pick – yo, Miller's right behind you. Dang. Uh, oh. So I get the snipe Miller's pick early you don't know anything about me oh on the clock already oh shoot that was fast. McCaffrey and Barkley off the board first so Griff talk to us what, what are you looking at right now so this is tough man I'm usually a big running back guy personally but last year I went Michael Thomas around this same time and it really really helped me and I think you know I don't think does Michael Thomas have the year he had last year? Probably not, but does he have numbers very similar to that? Absolutely. Um, he's the best receiver in the league. What other picks I'm thinking here, obviously Zeke's intriguing, but Michael Thomas scores more fantasy points than Zeke does. Uh, Alvin Kamara, he was a little flat last year. He's on, he's on a he's fighting for some money this year. So he'll probably play better. I'm not – I'm just never really been sold on him completely on a fantasy perspective ever since last year. And then Dalvin Cook obviously was number the number two back, but he deals with injuries at some point every year. So at this high of a pick, when I have Michael Thomas on the board, I can't really go Dalvin Cook or Zeke here. I'm going to take Michael Thomas. All right. Okay, receiver off the board at three. Was that, was that who you were going to take, Miller, or are you, you kind of happy you took Michael Thomas there? Um, I was either going to go with Zeke or Michael Thomas, and I figured Griffin was probably going to pick one of the two. So I'm just going to go with the other one. I feel – I mean, it's it's weird because I feel like there's just so many good players in the NFL nowadays where, like, the first round isn't as, like, illustrious as it used to be. Like, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people think the best spot is that turn at the end of the first round, like getting two players because you really don't need somebody at the top all the time. Cause it's so rare that, like – you know, last year, Saquon Barkley, you know, David Johnson a couple years ago. It's like those guys that you take one or two, a lot of times don't end up finishing that high. It kind of feels like a bummer. Yeah, the end of the first round is loaded for sure. Yeah, so me at pick 10, I feel like every time I do one of these mock drafts, I, I'm ending up in the end of the first round. So we saw a big run on running backs after Zeke. So it was Dalvin Cook, Kamara, Henry, Aaron Jones, and then Hopkins. Um, so there is a good mix of people here. Um it's a weird spot, though, because there's nobody that's really too sexy, you know. Um, I guess the best-looking guy would be Kelsey, but he's not going to be going first round. I, it's, I don't know, man. I, for me, in the first round, it's hard to not go running back. Um, but when I'm looking at these running backs, like Joe Mixon, he's supposed to be holding out, so I don't think I would go there. Nick Chubb having a full year with Kareem Hunt in the backfield worries me because – that's just another mouth they're going to try and feed as well as getting Hooper. That's another mouth to feed. So it's like that. I don't know how much that offense, even though Chubb is a beast, I don't know if wasting a first round on him would be good. Josh Jacobs. I like Kenyon Drake. I like, but is it too early for them? Well, I mean, you're getting two picks back to back. So, I mean, not completely back to back, but like pretty well, much. Yeah, but relatively close together. So I think what I'm going to do here is go after a guy. Here's the thing. I, I don't like taking a receiver first round, but, for the like the mock drafts and like you know this is what you're supposed to do is kind of test things out i'm gonna go with probably the highest upside guy here and that's because he's in the best team in the league and that's tyree kill um 
Devontae Adams with the injury concerns is a little worrisome. And then Julio Jones, you know, sometimes he just doesn't get touchdowns. It kind of sucks. Um, and then luckily for me, the running back I was thinking about last round in Chubb and Jacobs are both still there. I don't know. Like, who, if you guys were here, who would, who would you be taking? I'm taking Josh. Roll Tide. <laughs> uh, I'm taking Nick Chubb. Everyone was really concerned about how Kareem Hunt would take away from his carries. It really – I mean, he, he was like, he slowed down a little bit at the end of the year, but Chubb was a beast throughout the entire season last year. And I think, I don't think that goes away. He's obviously a superb talent. I don't think Cleveland's going to get away from running the ball. Just trying to help Baker out that much more in pass protection. I think what really worries me is that like last year, they they really just, when Kareem Hunt came back, they just used him as a weapon, more of like a pass game guy. Yeah. But like, I mean, Chubb and and Hunt pretty much have, like, similar fantasy points, like, from week eight on ever since Hunt came back. So it was like – because I know Chubb took a hit and Hunt was having some good weeks where I was even able to start him in, like, my 12 team, which was good, and my eight team even. But I think – man, I think I'm going to go the upside of Chubb just because of how beast of a run game is, and they fixed that offensive line. So I'll take Chubb. I usually would go Josh Jacobs, but – Oh, my God, I'm on the clock again. Yep. No, oh, Miller's guy is gone. I know. Crazy. Two two Alabama guys both going to Team Seven. Oh, I'm gonna do something oh. kind of nuts here. I'm Go nuts. He's Actually, <laughs> dude, imagine he just builds an uh, just an Alabama team. Honestly, with Miller, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, last year in our in our league, he took Fournette round one. That was like that was the talk. That was the talk of the town. Like. <laughs> I really like Leonard Fournette. This that did not work out either. <laughs> he yeah. wasn't horrible. He was, he was like he just didn't Miller, score. That's Miller's his problem. Did, sure was so messed up, and he still did really well. Dude, because I remember he literally had no notes or anything. He did. He took Mahomes. Okay, explain See, the pick, Miller. Why? Okay. Why over Lamar? So to be honest, it was a tough choice. But the thing was, is I looked at it, and I'm thinking longevity in terms of defenses that both have to play and obviously you could see like in the draft and in free agency everybody in the Chiefs division was going more often so that those offenses are going to be going nuts this year whereas you know obviously you have to play the defenses of um, the Steelers which is a pretty all right defense and then you have to play you know Cleveland and I mean the Bengals really aren't that great but I mean I don't know I was just thinking about who they're gonna be playing two times a year and I just think I like Mahomes a little bit better for that I, I definitely agree if you go in Mahomes over Lamar I think Lamar's great but the chances of Mahomes putting up the numbers that he's put up in the last two years are way more likely oh, than yeah. Lamar repeating what he did last year yeah I think, the, I think go ahead okay I think the lore about um Lamar is because he's going to add like 80 yards on the ground, you know, which is kind of insane. Um, and obviously he's been healthy. His career with Mahomes obviously slowed down last year, kind of had a down year for Mahomes, um, which is kind of crazy to say, cause it was still like an insane year. I think he finished like QB eight, even though he missed some time and stuff, but it, it's really just how much you value that run game that he's going to have. Cause Mahomes can give you 30 yards, but I think Lamar can give you like 80 and a touchdown on the ground. So. That's the thing, though, is I think that eventually at some point, you know, we've seen every running quarterback after their first season, you know, have some downfalls and stuff like that. So I think eventually Lamar Jackson's going to either, you know, he's going to get hurt at some point or something's going to happen. So I'm just not going to take the chance. I mean, Griffin, was that a thought for you to be going after maybe a Mahomes there? or, or No, I, the guy I wanted is here. And uh, I'm going to take him, and I'm going to explain. Austin Eckler, especially because this is a PPR league. Okay. My first okay. running back in a 12 teamer. If I get, if you get into the spot where I got the number four, or the number three pick, right, and you go with a guy like Michael Thomas, who you definitely want in that position because McCaffrey's gone, Barkley's gone. So at this point, you're still the top tier running backs, but a guy like Kamara and Dalvin Cook, we talked about with the the injury with Dalvin Cook and the inconsistency of Kamara. You definitely, you if you want to go Michael Thomas, no one's going to hate you for that, but you're going to have a lot of running backs go by. And if this guy falls to you in round two in a PPR league, you're, you're just very happy because Austin Eckler yeah. is probably one of the best PPR running backs, if not the uh, – Christian McCaffrey. Besides, besides Christian McCaffrey, who's not human, yeah, Austin Eckler is your PPR, like Jesus almost, when it comes to running back. <laughs> He's now the guy. 
in LA as Melvin Gordon's moved on to Denver. He there's now he's going to be getting the main the main uh, attention on the running side as well as well as the passing side. It does suck that the Chargers are probably going to be rolling with a QB by committee, mm-hmm. uh, Tyrod and Herbert, and they'll be trying to figure that out. And that'll maybe impact him a little bit, but I think Eckler's still a beast there, especially getting stuck with a top pick in a 12-team draft. I think, I think getting him at the end of the second is good. I think that, like, when some teams are getting him early second, mid-second, even slips into the first in some leagues, I think that, that worries me because, one, like you said, we don't know what the quarterback situation is. I think if Tyrod's a starter, it'll be a lot better for Eckler because they'll be able to run options. They'll be able to, you know, Tyrod's very conservative. He doesn't throw picks. He doesn't throw it down the field too much. So Eckler would definitely thrive from that. But also, I mean – even though he was really good without Melvin Gordon, I think it's just because teams really didn't know what they were getting out of Eckler those first few weeks. Because once Melvin Gordon came back, Melvin Gordon was a threat and on the ground. It's just Eckler was a beast in the air. So it's going to be interesting to see this man now paid and fully like kitted out on that offense, like how he's going to perform. I mean, I, I had him last year. I, I was excited to have him those, those first like 10 weeks. So I, I'm not mad at the pick. I, I think it's a pretty solid pick to walk away with him and Thomas. So now I've got another pick here, and this is tough because after this pick, I don't pick for a long time. So I either go, obviously Lamar is on the board, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not a fan of taking, I'm like you, Jay, when it comes to this, I don't like taking quarterbacks high. I, I mean, I, mm-hmm. it, Lamar, everyone will say Lamar and Mahomes are generation, and they definitely are. And it's like, I don't think it changes the way you approach fantasy though. It's, I think you it's still so got to get your main core position because that's what that's your money maker at the end of the day. You have more receivers and running backs, especially with the flexes. If we run two flexes, your position players are way more valuable than just getting one top end quarterback. Last year in our draft, I went receiver and running back heavy as I always do, and I ended up with Deshaun Watson as my starting quarterback. Yeah, and that's probably the third best guy you, you can, can get. Right one one loaded receivers, so I don't like taking quarterback early like this. The thing now, my approach here probably there's a ton. Wide receivers come in bunches in this league. I mean, you got Stephon Diggs down here at 25, and you know, I mean, that's it's a little disrespectful. I mean, yeah, I, and being a Vikings fan, it's sad to see Diggs, but having him down at 25 is disrespectful. I don't yeah. care if he's a Buffalo now. Josh Allen is <laughs> a serviceable quarterback. He's a good receiver. So I'm probably going to go running back here because there is way less running backs, as we know. And it's interesting. They got Le'Veon Bell down here kind of low at 20. Mm-hmm. I get it. He was down here. The Jets kind of suck. Adam Gase and him pretty aren't the best of friends. But I like him more than Gurley. It's just now I'm stuck here between Clyde Edwards Hilaire and Chris Carson. It's, it's, it's tough, it's, man. It's weird because with those two guys, you have a rookie who should not have been drafted where he was, but he was drafted so high because of his scheme fit. And then you, but like, then again, it's like, you don't know what he's going to get. You don't know how much Dame Williams is going to get. Um, yeah. they, they never really use a running back. So it's weird, but he has so much upside. And then Carson, it seems as if Pete Carroll doesn't want to give him the ball, even though his talent is so high, but like he still ends up with 120 and a touchdown in those games. I mean, yeah, you look at his numbers from last year and he had nine touchdowns and 1200 plus yards. And I can tell you as a Chris Carson owner, he should have had a lot more than that, except for the times where it's, you know, first and goal, and they throw C.J. Procise out there. Uh-huh. Just to since it's a mock, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have some fun with it. We're gonna take the rookie Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I really think in Kansas City's intricate offense, he's gonna have a big role, not only running but being a pass catcher. He's got elite speed, quickness, footwork. Good guy, good pass catcher out of the backfield. I think he has a lot of upside in general. I don't know if he's that high of a rank where I put him over like Le'Veon or Chris Carson, but there's people who are having. Hilaire in the first round. He's a solid guy for sure. I mean, Andy Reid said at the draft, this guy is like Brian Westbrook. And obviously, you know, Andy Reid had a lot of success with that, yeah. with Brian Westbrook and that Philadelphia Eagles team. So that kind of comparison for that kid, and obviously they took him higher than what everyone thought, and that's probably for a reason. So I'm going to gamble and go with the upside. of. I'm going to be honest. But right, right before we get Miller, his pick, I know he's thinking about it right now, but I mean, when I looked at him, even though he's really great, I compared him to C.J. Anderson. He's very small. He's very bulky. He's able to do a little bit more. But, like, I, I don't I don't see the talent that they saw in him over, you know, Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift, Dobbins, um, even Akers, if you want to throw him in there. But, it's like I said, for them to take 
him in the first round over a lot of other, you know, they needed a corner. There was a lot of great corners still left. You know, they needed, they, they, there's so many different needs they had. They took him. It's, it's a sign of confidence. All right. We go down to Texas. Where, uh, Where's our, where's our where's our little cowboy thinking of going here? You got Zeke, you got Mahomes. Is this receiver time, or are you sticking with one of the positions you already took? I think I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna go receiver time. Okay. Um, I'm a little skeptical about this pick, but like since Griffin said it's also a mock, I'm gonna have some fun with it, and I'm gonna go with Mike Evans. Okay. I love that pick. I love that. So I mean, I'm gonna take it obviously because he's playing with the goat. Um, the downside is there's going to be another big receiver because, you know, Gronk's going to be playing on the team. Who knows how long or how healthy he's going to be. So, I mean, that's a question mark. But, I mean, Chris Godwin's really good too and everything. But, I mean, Tom Brady is, you know, 40-some-odd years old. And he's going to be saying, you know, I'm just going to chuck it up. And Mike Evans, you know, (laughs) long arms are going to be out there somewhere. So, I mean, I'll take it. And he's – you know, he's not playing with Jameis Winston anymore. He got his eyes fixed and is now going to be a backup on New Orleans. So I'll, I'll take that any day of the week. One thing I was going to say, too, about when you took Mahomes and obviously you were talking about Lamar Jackson, um, it's, I think that with the quarterback and the tight end position, I, I did it last year. I took a tight end way earlier than I ever thought. I took Kelsey around here. I think I took him at 306. But um, it's such – I think the reason you take it is because you don't have to make a decision. Because that's one of the hardest things in fantasy is when you have four receivers that all have great matchups and they're all playing great and you only have three slots, you know? That's, yeah. like, the worst decision. So when, when you take a Kelsey or you take a Lamar or a Mahomes or something like that, you never have to worry about that position unless they're on a bye week. I think that helps teams. Because then, you know, you have teams last year that had, like, Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson. It was like, okay, who am I playing this week? They both have good matchups, you know? It's, I think it's that peace of mind factor that makes people go that high, um, which it definitely helps. It's just – it's hard to pass up on those skill positions, like you were saying. But I've already had my mind set on this pick. I just didn't think he would actually fall to me. Um, ironically, I was looking at the people that, like, the auto drafts before me, and I was like, okay, well, there's one team that already has two running backs. They won't go with the third running back. And they're the only team that went with the running back in round three after Griffin. So um, I'm going ahead and taking Melvin Gordon out of Denver. Um, I really like them paying him a big bag. It sucks for Philip Lindsay. Um, I thought Philip Lindsay was a good running back. It's pretty much non-existent nowadays because of this but um melvin gordon when he came back even though he seemed quiet because you know eckler was really the shining star there in la i mean melvin gordon still was a really good running back when he came back he gave you solid points he was still a touchdown machine he didn't really lose any step so now that he's in denver he's gonna be facing the chargers twice a year i mean this is a guy who if i have him as my number two running back he's never really that much of a injury concern it's the hole that really hurt him last year but i think he's gonna bounce back so much more in denver um with Drew Locke now being seen as this franchise guy and all these rookies outside, KJ Hamler, Jerry Judy, Noah Fan in the second year, Sutton on his third. You know, I think that they're going to be a little conservative, you know, throw some dump offs, throw some um, power runs in there, you know, definitely use their running backs well. So Melvin Gordon being there was a big help for me. Um, Gurley and Carson came off the board after as well as Thielen and Keenan Allen. So a good mix. So now I have a receiver and I have two running backs. And now this is where it gets weird because it's, you know, when you look at the receivers, like DJ Moore is the top guy, AJ Brown, Cortland Sutton, Calvin Ridley, nobody like that pops out. And then when you look at the running back spot, like Le'Veon's there, which is cool. Um, David Johnson, Mark Ingram, you know, there's nobody that's really popping out to me, which is what kind of sucks. Um, I think that when you get to the fourth round, running backs are so small that you probably, sh- I mean, we have two flexes in this league. So I think that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do something that seems stupid. It's going to seem weird and it feels weird, but I'm taking David Johnson. And I think that um, I was watching some other like stuff just getting talked about today, like in the NFL and everything. And somebody made a good point is that um, when you see a team do something stupid, they kind of make sure that they don't look so stupid in the season. Um, so I think that Houston trading away DeAndre Hopkins for De- for David Johnson. If you think David Johnson's not going to be getting 20 carries a game, I think you're crazy. You know, Bill O'Brien doesn't have – Bill O'Brien can't have David Johnson come in there and get 10 carries a game and lose his starting job. You know, he has to be the starter. He has to get the production. He has to have the volume. So worst comes to worst, if you give David Johnson 20 carries, he's at least going to get 70 yards in my opinion. 
So I think that he'll at least have an upside. He'll be a flex for me. Um, it gets another running back position out of the way. So I, I'm able to not really worry too much about running back right now. So, I, I mean, there's a big s- spread of receivers right after me. So I, I think I'm happy taking a running back, especially because I have to wait such a long time to get my next pick. Yeah, I will. I'm kind of thinking the same as you are. I don't really have to wait that long until my next pick, but obviously there's not really a whole lot of notable running backs on the board. They're all either, you know, kind of timeshare guys or they're guys that, you know, are kind of shaky here and there um, or don't have good teams built around them. Even saying that, this is going to feel so dumb, but I'm going to take Le'Veon Bell for my other running back spot. And I'm going to have Le'Veon Bell and Ezekiel Elliott as my running backs. And that just feels awful, but (laughs) I'll take it. So I'm going to go with that and hopefully hope for a good wide receiver when I get back down. I think if Le'Veon's there at the end of the fourth round, you'd be insane not to take him. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, I know if Miller wasn't taking him, I was going to take him. I know. As but, soon as you did, I saw your, I saw your, your frown come up. <laughs> but I'm actually not upset because I'm in the position I want to be in right now, and I'm going to get Devontae Parker at this pick. That's a good pick. I mean, the man's a beast, and then on top of it, he's going to be getting Tua this year at some point. Whether it's right away or not, it doesn't matter. He's even better, he starts with Fitzpatrick. <laughs> yeah, even if he starts with Fitzpatrick, I don't really care. Fitzpatrick is 400 yards, you know? <laughs> Fitzpatrick's that man. So, you know, I'm looking at – I got two running backs that are good PPR, assuming Clyde edwards Hilaire is the guy I'm thinking he is. Yeah. And then Eckler's beast in pass catching. I and mean, we're playing this to a PPR league. We're going pass catching heavy, and that's, that's how I usually approach it, and it works out, I would say, a lot, most of the time. Um, now I'm looking – now I can either go a running back and – get a flex spot taken care of, but I'm just really not in love. I like the guys that are here, but I think I can really sure up the wide receiver spot kind of like, and I like doing that. I like having a good corpse of wide receivers and they're really flexible and you can move them in and out and change them up and you're still looking good. You got now, a long way to go too. Do I take Tyler Lockett or do I go with Stephon Diggs in a new situation? I mean, since I don't draft for a while, I personally, I always just go off of what I like. And I know Stefan Diggs is the number one. I don't know that Lockett's the number one anymore in Seattle. Yeah. That's and how I always viewed it. Stefan Diggs is a, is a deep ball guy, quick on the routes, you know, uses his speed to get it. That's what Josh Allen is. He's not the most accurate thrower, but he's definitely the hardest thrower. You know, where yeah, Russell yeah. Wilson is definitely able to make plays, which I, I, Lockett is an absolute beast, you know. Man, dude, you can't dude, underestimate. You're just – I'm looking – you look at Stephon Diggs' numbers, right? And everyone said, you know, Diggs dropped off in 2019. And I think he definitely – for what – First for half. The amount of targets and the amount of catches he had compared to his numbers. So you look at 2018 and 2019. Diggs had almost – had 55 more targets in 2018. And he had – 39 more receptions. Yeah. But Diggs had 109 more yards in 2019 than he did in 2018, and that's with 39 less catches. And you got a guy – so now you go from Kirk Cousins, who's about a solid average NFL quarterback, that middle of the pack, just solid QB. Hmm. Now you're going to a big arm quarterback in Josh Allen who loves to just throw deep, and you got a guy in Stephon Diggs who just had 1,100 yards on 18 yards per reception – and six touchdowns last year. That is, seems like a match made in heaven. I love Diggs from all this time in Minnesota. I still love him. I don't care that he got traded. He's going to be on my squad. I mean, I would, I would not be mad if you're walking out of the draft with Michael Thomas, Devontae Parker, and Stephon Diggs as your receiving core. Oh, and then I'm very happy. <laughs> and we the fact that you were able to get Diggs, awesome. you got Diggs after Parker, and yeah. Diggs is probably going to be that right wide receiver two over Parker. It's kind of crazy. The only problem there is that Diggs and Parker share bye weeks, but I'm really not a huge bye week guy. You just get yeah. the players you like, and you know if you have to tank a bye week, if you're eight and two and you're too lost on your bye weeks, who really cares? You know, so I'm not a big bye weeks person. It's not you don't want everyone on your roster to be bye week ten, but you know if yeah. you have a couple like bye weeks, it's not that big of a one deal. thing to look at too. I don't know, I forgot what teams they are, but there's two teams with a late bye week to where um, playoffs. Yeah, so you, I think it's, yeah, it's the Bears and. The Niners, I think, 
week you 11. Don't want Bears players. You don't want Bears players anyways. Yeah, but, th- like, there's some teams that are in week 11 where a lot of playoffs start that week. So, you definitely want to – look, there's a lot of bye weeks that are late this year, which is kind of weird to see. So, um, Miller, I mean, your team's definitely looking like a bag of Skittles right now. Got all the colors. Yeah. So, you could pretty much go anywhere here. What are you What are you thinking? You trying to get that? Uh, you trying to get that cherry flavored skittle, or are you gonna, <laughs> you gonna double up on? on Man, I I don't know. I'm uh, I'm kind of between two minds right now. Obviously, like you said, I have a little bit of everything. Um, I only got one wide receiver, so I had an in- interesting pick for that one. I think. Um, so I'm trying to weigh my options right now. And the two that I'm weighing is, do I want to take, I really don't want to take James Conner. I really don't. Um, I, if you don't know already, I hate James Conner. Not as hard oh, yeah. he overcame <laughs> cancer if you didn't know. Um, but um, I, I mean, I've never been a fan player. Him and uh, also I've been looking at DeAndre Swift a little bit in Detroit. Obviously, you know, Carryon Johnson gets hurt a lot and everything like that, and they just don't seem to, like, give him the ball as much as they should. Hmm. Well, so trust the fact, me, I know. <laughs> the fact that they drafted DeAndre Swift, like, kind of really intrigues me. So I've been thinking about that a little bit. But I think I'm going to go wide receiver here. And Talk to me. Let's, let's hear it, buddy. I'm going to take Tyler Boyd, I think. Okay. Bro. I, I'm i not going to lie with you. I like that pick a lot. I appreciate that. I was thinking about it for a lot, and I was like, I really don't like Chark as much. Metcalf is pretty good. I was like, Jarvis Landry's really good. Devo Samuel, I don't know if I can trust him. Julian Edelman, who knows Bro. what's going to happen. I think what you have to realize in the draft, I think Miller is a perfect example of this is that Miller doesn't get to pick for another, I mean, 10, 15 picks after his pick, you know? So Tyler Boyd's definitely not going to be there as next pick. So if he really wants Tyler Boyd, you know, he's not going to be able to get him that next pick. So that it, it makes sense for the, in that standpoint. It might be a little bit of a reach over some other guys, but if that's your guy and you know you're not going to get him your next pick, you have to take him there. So that's I, true. I like I, it. Our opinions just differ here, and that's what's great about fantasy in so many different perspectives. Man, if you, just watching Debo Samuel evolve throughout the year, and by the time he, he got to the playoffs, that man was a wide receiver number one. That man is a beast. And I was banking on it in my – I mean, if you listen to our podcast, radio show, you know that I'm in this, like, 12-team high-stakes league where it's big rosters and you got to take players that are – you know, usually kind of take players that are kind of unknown. I took a gamble on Debo Samuel, and my team was pretty bad last year. But, you know, I got some good guys to stash for next year. I think he's huge this year. But, you know, I, I think Boyd's great, especially pairing up with Burrow. I think he's going to be more productive. So, we'll see. I think, I think what the lore about Boyd was originally, like two years ago, was that he was so good in those short to meet intermediate routes, and A.J. Green was that big play guy. So, now that they get A.J. Green back most likely – now that you have Tyler Boyd there to actually go back to what he was doing instead of being the number one, I think it's going to be really good for Boyd. Um, while, while that was all happening, I did end up taking DJ Chark. I just thought he was the better receiver out of um, him and DK and Jarvis and everybody. But um, it came back around, and DK Metcalf's still there too. So I'm not going to pass up on two of these initial first names, you know? CPU also took a pick I really wanted. They took Cam Akers. I, really, I was thinking about he, I, I, like I really like sure. I, when I was looking I, I was looking at running back like I don't like Connor but getting Connor in the fifth late fifth is a really great value yeah. and like I, it was like I could get him as my fourth because he'd still be a flex but I, I'd rather at least just solidify the receiver spot and then what does suck is the other play I wanted was Darren Waller but I just couldn't pass up on DK Metcalf so it did make me lose out on Waller um but I'm happy having DJ Chark, DK Metcalf, and Tyreek Hill as my receivers. I, I'm really happy with that. Man, this is tough. So I got a question for y'all. Oh yeah. So do you think who who's gonna be the better running back in Miami, Matt Breida or Jordan Howard? It's here's the thing. Breida's gonna be the better running back, but Howard, at least at the beginning, is going is most likely gonna be the lead back. So he's obviously going to be used for the power runs and stuff, but he's not going to be able to carry the workload. Breida's, I mean, they trade it for Breida, you know? So that means that if you're willing to give up something for him, then that means that you are planning to use him. So 
I think I I really do like Brita a lot this year. Man, these wide receivers are tough too. I mean, you you have two receivers and two running backs, so you could go either or here. You can even go with a tight end. I mean, we've seen a little bit of a run on tight ends. It's pretty much a steep drop off after um, Hunter Henry, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. So. For sure. Well, I ended up going Marvin Jones because I thought that I'd like him better than Michael Gallup's. And I don't know what he's going to do in Dallas now. Marquise Brown, I feel like he's kind of a boomer bust guy. Will Fuller is going to play four games and then that's going to be it. <laughs> and then John Brown, you know, I mean, Stephon Diggs is there now. So, yeah. Marvin Jones, I mean, he's a, He's a touchdown machine. He really is. He's a little underrated. I got to say that. I, I don't think of, think highly of him because he, I know he's underrated, and it's weird. But, <laughs> I mean, Griff, you're kind of in that same spot. Two, two running backs, three receivers. You know, you have literally the, the preset down. You have your two running backs. You have three receivers. You got flexes to fill and everything else. So. Yes, sir. And I'm going with my first flex spot. We're going to go with another rookie running back. I'm taking Keyshawn Vaughn here. I like his upside okay. in Tampa. I was high on Ronald Jones last year, and then I then I just saw the way he fit in the Bruce Arians offense, and it doesn't seem like the best fit to me. They went out and they drafted Keyshawn Vaughn. One of their needs was running back. I think this is the guy that they're going to feature in the backfield alongside Brady. And if Brady's playing anything like he did in New England, they're going to be handing the ball off a decent amount. Brady's going to get – I mean, Brady's got probably some of the best weapons he's had in his career since Randy Moss. But – I think they're still going to have – I mean, Brady's 42. So, yeah. they're, they're going to make sure he's handing the ball off a decent amount. I think they drafted Keyshawn Vaughn to kind of be that bell cow kind of guy for him. So, I like his upside as a rookie a lot. So, I'm, I'm honestly in the opposite boat. I'm, I'm in the – I think Ronald Jones is going to make the next step this year. Um, I just don't see Keyshawn Vaughn being like a, like a featured run, rookie running back. I feel like he's going to be like kind of a compliment. Um, but, like, I feel like now – I think the biggest problem with Ronald Jones last year was he really wasn't getting many carries because Jameis Winston already threw five picks by the second quarter, you know. Hmm. So, like, now that he's going to have a safer quarterback and an actual complete offense, I mean, Bruce Arians was running Andre Ellington and Chris Johnson into the ground in Arizona, right. you know. So, I mean, literally, I think Keyshawn Vaughn is that Chris Johnson role. To work. I mean, there was games where CJ2K was looking like a classic CJ2K in Arizona just because – Bruce Arians is like, we're getting him a touchdown, you know. So, I, it's not a bad pick at all. But you, I mean, this is the flex running back spot. This is a guy that I'm going to be using as primarily a backup. Yeah. I think receivers in PPR leagues are more valuable as it is. So, if I'm looking here, if I have good enough receivers, I'm probably starting two receivers in the flex anyways. But Keyshawn Vaughn, I think, is a guy that sees potential in both passing and running, obviously. So, now I'm definitely – this is about the sweet spot for me. Round seven, I've got my position players, so i got three in each. Three receivers, three running backs. So I've got my basic starters at those prime positions. I'm going quarterback. Round seven is – this is my round. The elite quarterbacks are still there. I've got Prescott, Murray, Wilson, and Watson. Dak almost threw for 5,000 yards last year and just now has C.D. Lamb added to his team. He's playing on a, he's now playing, he's really playing for his money this year. If we didn't think he was playing for it last year, man's got Andy Dalton signed to his roster now. <laughs> like he, he better come out with a vengeance, but I'm still going to stay away from him. Cause I don't like Dak. God. And now you just look my Deshaun Watson lost his best weapon. I still think Deshaun's a great quarterback, but he's going to drop off fantasy wise a little bit. So now I'm stuck between Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson. If I'm really looking at it, you go with a guy that's in his second year gaining DeAndre Hopkins, getting some help throughout the entire team, adding Isaiah Simmons, that defense is going to help them. But I'm so – I'm just going to – you can't – I can't not go Russ here, man. I'm going with the experience over, you know, the, the boom potential, Kyler. Russell Wilson's going to give me those numbers, so I'm going to go with him. Staying – I mean, it's a safe pick, you know. If you're said, why take the risk if you, if you don't need to, you know? I mean, Russ is going to put up – the numbers, I mean, he's a runner just like Kyler. I think Russ is just the guaranteed version of Kyler. Now, Kyler could, you know, put up higher numbers, but I just – just I don't know. I don't know if that offensive line is really there yet for him to excel as a passer. 
Not sure yet. No, you're looking a little a little slim in the running back spot there. Yeah, that's the issue right now. <laughs> I, I, I want to take the PPR God, but obviously Tom Brady doesn't play with him anymore, so yeah. I don't know how he's going to do. But honestly, looking at this list, Darius guys has played like what half a game. <laughs> yeah, um, he's a beast when he's in though. Sony Michelle's good, but obviously, like I don't think the Patriots are going to be anywhere close to winning. You know, more than ten games a year after you know losing, you know, some of the players that they have. Um, so I don't know how much they're going to be running the ball. I'd like to think that they're going to be passing the ball a little bit more. Um, I'm not in love with Kareem Hunt, and obviously the other guy that I'm looking at right now is Philip Lindsay because, you know, Melvin Gordon, I don't know how much of a pass catcher he's really going to be in Denver, so I still would like to think that they're going to try and incorporate Lindsay in that spot, but I, I just don't know, man. I'm not in love with any of the running backs here, but I think I'm going to go with James White anyway. I mean, if you if you do have a – quarterback that we think is going to be subpar I mean you might as well go with a a guy who at least can help him in the pass game um see now I'm in a weird spot because I have you see Dak and Kyler go off the board who were guys I was looking to target um I could go and get the other two needs on my team quarterback and tight end out of the way right now and it would be very good I know that but it's just one of those things where it's like like we said, the running back position is so slim right now. So getting another running back would really, really help. I mean, quarterbacks, like it's, it's really how big of a, of a difference are, am I going to see from Deshaun Watson to Aaron Rodgers? Because they're six spots away from in rankings, you know. Ah, I, think, I think what I'm going to do to start off is I'm going to play safe and I'm going to get – a running back because I don't really see any that I like right now. Um, I only see one who I think has a chance to do good or at least at the worst. I mean, it's a 12 team league be a solid flex option. And that's Sony Michelle because like you were saying with the pass catching in uh, James white, I'd rather get the running um, ability from Sony Michelle who hopefully they just power through as a first rounder. Um, we see both the quarterbacks go off the board, which actually makes my next pick a lot easier um, because I'm not really going to take a, a Breeze or a Matt Ryan this high. Um, so that leads me to the tight end position. And I'm actually not going to go Hunter Henry because his injuries scared the living crap out of me. Evan Ingram, also injured, scares the crap out of me. Tyler Higby got paid, but he's a committee guy. I'm going to be going with Austin Hooper here, who was an absolute monster last year for the Falcons. And with the amount of money that Cleveland just paid him, I, I don't see a way that he's not going to get involved in that offense highly uh even with Njoku behind him even with Odell and uh Landry I mean this is going to be I feel like Baker's favorite weapon soon so um we see a couple of young receivers go off the board and Slayton Jefferson and Lamb after um the tight end run we just went on so Miller you got some options here I was just fixing to take your guy Jay I was fixing to take Slayton but obviously he got picked a couple picks before um that's tough because I thought that was going to be a steal if I could have him fall to me because I was going to look at getting a wide receiver here, and now it's tough because it's, you know, I really don't know what I want. Um, you know, guys like uh, Sterling Shepard, I don't know if I'm really in love with that right now. Mike Williams, I'm definitely not in love with that. Um, John Brown, eh. I mean, this is the eighth round. I, I feel like you got some good value here for a lot of these guys. Yeah, I think I'm going to go – with <laughs> man, this is tough. Because Griffin's I, hoping something's happening. Oh, they yeah. really took my boy Justin Jefferson. That what? I know oh it's it's God. a little weird. The it CPU is. is trolling me, Dude, man. Team, team six is honestly the most trash team. They have Lamar. Like, oh, they they took AJ Green, Edelman, Kirk Jefferson. Like, they were just like, let's take every oh, risk. My like, gosh. Man, I, I think I'm going to go with some veteran experience here um, to compliment Michael Thomas. I'm going to go with Emmanuel Sanders. Wow, doubling up on the Saints, guys. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Griff, you got some options here. Oh, I do. I'm just wondering. I know where I would go if I was in both of your shoes, but 
I want I know, to see how I, I'm out. thinking like it is very clear in my head. I want wide receiver at this pick. I've got three. Okay. I've got three running backs. I like wide receivers. Now it's just who do I want? I say I'll be honest with you. I was I was straight up on the tight end train. So yeah. no tight end. I'm going tight end at my next pick. Like I just, just with I just, mock, I'm going to be very transparent here. That I'm going wide. I'm going either wide receiver, or running back here at this round, and then. Four picks are going to pass, and I'm going tight end. It's just I'm taking the best guy I think available. I would say because my worry is that I feel like it's such a steep drop-off after Higby that I'd be worried that Higby doesn't fall, yeah. and you have to get stuck with a Cook or a fan or a Gronk who you really don't know what the hell is going to happen with them. Or, I mean, you could Honestly, I'm guy very okay. And, and yeah, we'll get to that in a second. So now I'm going to go wide receiver, and I'm going okay. with a young guy. I'm okay. going Ruggs or I'm going Judy. Now oh, you're going. Oh, you're going real young. Okay. I'm going. I'm going rookie. I I really like this rookie class. I was going to go Justin Jefferson, assuming that Judy would have gone. Yeah. After C.D. Lamb, but I I was honestly like at this pick, I was going rookie wide receiver because I, I think, like having fun in fantasy too. I like I really like the rookies this year. Jefferson's my guy. Being a Vikings fan, he's gonna be plugged in right away into that offense. I think he's also gonna be a number one for some games because you know Thielen's gonna miss a couple. It happened. And, Thiel- and Thielen's also gonna get double teamed off the rip. Teams are not gonna really respect Jefferson until he produces at an NFL level, and that's gonna probably if I if he's as good you know as I think he is and as people around the Vikings think he is, he's gonna pop for a couple big games, and before teams are gonna start respecting him, then you got him and Thielen doing you know things like him and Stephon Diggs did that's hope that that's a hopeful scenario but that didn't happen because team six decided to take him over CeeDee Lamb which I disagree with I think CeeDee's going to be an absolute stud in Dallas he's going to be really good so it's you're between Jerry and Ruggs right Henry's got that elite speed Alabama you saw he could do everything because he's going to be there Vegas too Vegas they've got they're flashy guy. Probably no fans, though, but it doesn't matter. You know, they're debuting in that city. Damn. It's just at this point, do I trust Drew Locke or Derek Carr more? I mean, you know, they- I'm going to go I'm gonna go with Judy. Okay. I'm going to go with Judy. That's, I know that's Miller's guy. Yes, sir. Man, is a stud. I can't believe he fell to Denver. And I really think him okay. alongside of Corbin Sutton is going to be. The board falls your way, too. Yeah, so the tight ends did fall my way. And now what makes this tough is that I really like Noah Fant, but I'm not going to take a, I'm not gonna take Fant now that I have Judy. So I'm not going to be sitting there in the same game. Throw to Judy, throw to Fant at the same time. Yeah. Um, Higby. Higby, Higby, Higby. I mean, Higby just got a fat payday. He did, and it – it's a thicky. It's weird to me because, like, he was good. He was solid last year, but only three touchdowns. The fantasy owner, I like touchdowns from the tight end spot. I'll take 30 yard, I'll take thirty to 40 yards, but as long as you score a touchdown, that's all I want out of you. That's like when Eric Ebron the- had his huge year. Man, I was just – Those are those Jason Witt numbers, baby. 30 yards and a touchdown. That's yeah. all you need. And that's all you need out of your tight end spot. Gronk is very tempting. Gronk is super tempting, but again, injuries with him are his worst attribute. He hasn't played football in a while, so that scares me. You know, Jared Cook's good, but Saints have too many weapons, and I have Michael Thomas. I'm going to go Higby. I was going to say, I mean, just reading the, the, the note that they have at the top, he was owned in less than 2% of leagues up until week 10, and then he had 500 yards in five weeks. Yeah. I mean, once the Rams – Five weeks, 500 yards. That's – Rams really started featuring him at the end of the year, and he showed out. He got paid. They got tired of him. Assume he's going to have that same role in the offense. So, you know. All right, Miller. You're you're definitely the most interesting team that we have in the mock draft and definitely the worst. So, um, I'm going to take um, the opposite of what Griffin did with his wide receiver. I'm going to be taking rugs. Okay. Just because – I feel, like you would have, I feel like you would have taken Judy if I went rugs, though. Probably, yeah. I was going to pick the one you didn't. Okay, so Aaron Rodgers literally gets picked and pick after, which kind of makes me a little sad. Um, so, I'm, 
<laughs> you have to say that. The thing is, he, what did he throw? Three picks last year? Like, there's no one safer in, in the league. Four picks. Yeah, 26 touchdowns, four picks. That's 4, just the thing with Rodgers. He, he threw for 4,000 yards. It's been brutal the last three years. This man I had Aaron Rodgers last year on my major league, on my, my, my large uh, pot fantasy league. It was like, bro, Dude, I had I Aaron Rodgers. I spent a lot of money on him in the auction draft. And – he just sucked for me. Fantasy I just think that a guy that they drafted a quarterback in round one over him. Oh, he'll be motivated. I mean, he threw sure. one interception for every thousand yards. You know, that's pretty nuts. Just so I think he was going to have, I is, think he's going to be a beast. The thing is, the touchdowns really what lead to points for quarterbacks, especially yeah. if they're running six points per touchdown in some leagues, is what they do. I and Rodgers just doesn't throw a ton of touchdowns. That's his problem. I think you brought up the point they drafted Jordan Love. He'll probably be a little pissed off. Probably a few more that, touchdowns this year. I think that Aaron Jones' year last year was such an insane year, you know? I mean, oh. the dude had, like, 19 touchdowns on the ground or something like that. Like, he was insane. And then on top of that, there was no Adams for, you know, three months because he had an ACL, I mean, turf toe. And I, I think Aaron Rodgers <laughs> is going to do better this year. I took Darius Geis with that pick because I didn't think he'd still be there. Um, we saw Antonio Gibson, his third-string running back, go over him in Washington. Um but I think that I mean at, at pick nine, if I have to really, if I wasted pick nine, I'm not pissed off about it. You know, I, that's something that I it, it hurts a lot less to lose value in round nine than that. Um, Mike Williams went up ended up going after who was somebody I was looking here, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and shore up the quarterback spot. And even with the bias aside, I'm gonna take Daniel Jones just because I like him a lot more. I think he has a better all around offense compared to all of these guys, especially because Saquon has been a very good pass catching back past few years um they're gonna be able to throw a lot more daniel jones has been a very uh accurate thrower he just needs to hold on to the ball but i mean I, I i with no Aaron Rodgers there i needed a quarterback none of them probably would follow me in the next round so i'm, I'm happy with dj all right miller what you got he's he's thinking he said yeah. how can i make this team worse he's really pondering go ahead and take a b <laughs> I needed a tight end, so I got it. Uh, no fan. I like it. It's, it's a high upside I, pick. You see, and I would have gone, although Higby's a beast, I would have gone Noah Fant if I didn't take Jerry Judy. Yeah. I think, I think, I think Fant's a beast. He brings the athleticism of a wide receiver to the tight end spot, and I think he really started clicking with Drew Locke, and I think that connection is going to grow really strong this year, and I think he's going to have a nice year. That brings it back to the – I mean, this, these are the bench slots. These are just pretty much – we're able to take shots at guys. Yeah, honestly. just take shots. I mean, in time, not, not as much thought you know process going into these ones. We filled out all our needs. I mean, all of us have quarterback, receivers, speaking, running backs, tight ends. Speaking of taking shots, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a shot on a guy that a lot of people would say is an understatement for what the Eagles did. I'm taking Jalen Rager at this pick. Dude, he's not even draftable for me. I could be in an 18 team boom, league. I think his boom potential is through the roof because I think it is because his his talent level right now is so low for me. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it from my perspective, this is a no not this is a this is a low risk high reward pick. I've got Judy, Parker, Diggs, Michael Thomas. I have four really good receivers. For my fifth receiver, I can take a guy, I can just take a flyer on a guy. And I think Jalen Rager's just, I think he's going to get a lot. He's been hated a lot by the media. You know, he's kind of being written off. And when you give a guy that motivation, yeah. that's as talented as he is. And you've got, he's got a good quarterback. He's in a good, he's got a, he's got a good offensive minded coach and Doug Peterson. He's in a good spot. I think, and I think just because he was drafted a little bit earlier than he should have been, doesn't mean I don't think that if he was taken in the second round, I guarantee you people wouldn't be writing him off like he is. I think he was a late second rounder. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But now I think he was taken in the first. Everyone over Jefferson, over like Mims. It. Like, it was a big Agreed. risk. And big, I, think, I, think, I think the Eagles – but I think this is their guy. I think they got him for a reason. This is why I'm taking a flyer on him. We'll see. I, I think it's a good pick for it being a flyer. I just – I think he's going to fill under the Aguilar role. I mean, he had so many drops in college. Yeah, like, yeah. it doesn't help that he keeps going in the media and giving the media quotes because it's just making him look like an ass. <laughs> Like, he's yeah, like, oh, go put on the tape. There's nothing I can't do. And literally everyone's like, catch. Like, you drop it. <laughs> like, he had like, I think he had like a, it was like, it was like an, it's like a 30% drop rate or something. Like, it's an yeah. insane number. It's not like but a even, low. Yeah. But even Nelson Aguilar had a productive year in the NFL. That's so true. Maybe, maybe true. I can get a productive year out of Jalen Rager. 
That's all you need is one year in fantasy, so we'll take it. All right, and this pick, handcuffs, baby. We love handcuffs. I got Keyshawn Vaughn. Yep. Getting Ronald Jones. If you passed on him, I was going to be mad. Getting Ronald Jones. Because then whoever, whoever ends up being the better one, you ship the other one off, you know? Yep. It's easy, bro. It's easy. I get, I just get – I get Tam- – you put in my running back spot, Tampa Bay. Exactly. Got the running backs. <laughs> All right, Miller, you're thinking pretty damn hard over there. He, Miller's oh, looking hard. at himself and just saying, what did I do? <laughs> at this point, I just, man. Apparently, if you're drafted in the in the four spot, be warned. You, your team might not look too hot. Oh, he's, got a, he's, got a, he's got a savage drafting. Okay. Problem. Whoa. Who did he, who did he take? Oh, oh Harambe. you – he was listening with handcuffs. That was my next round. That was my next pick. Yes, sir. That's a, I mean, Dalvin Cook, I, I don't think he's ever played a season with more than 14 games. So, well, yeah. It's not, a bad, it's not, it's not, a, bad, not a bad pick. You'll at least get a couple games out of him, you know? You know I, what? Feel, I feel like Madison, you can even put out there with how many – how low receivers they are. I think you put Madison out there as a flex on some weeks. Yeah. And I'm 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 going to take a little bit of credit for this pick. Maybe it's because I'm roommates <laughs> with Miller, but I can't stop raving about how good Alexander Madison is. Absolutely love him, love Dalvin, but man, that guy is injury prone. It's and it's scary. It's it's definitely scary. And you've got now you now you have leverage on the guy that has Dalvin Cook in your fantasy league because if you have Alexander Madison and Dalvin Cook goes down, that guy is definitely coming knocking on your door saying, "Yo, what do you want for Madison?" you can definitely get some value there. Yeah. You're going to be able to at least get a trade if Cook gets hurt, or you're going to have a very productive running back, even if he's the second running back on that offense. Great pick. So I'm stuck in the dilemma of there's two guys I want to pick in Nikhil Harry and Michael Pittman. But then at the top of the board, I know what Golden Tate did for the Giants last year when he came back from suspension, and him and Daniel Jones definitely have a great connection. But it's just the fact of – I mean, it, it would also be a handcuff with my with my quarterback, which would be good. Oh, man. I think I'm going to go with Golden Tate, who's proven. It's a good PPR guy. He, I mean, that dude is reception king. He had like five years in a row with 90-plus pick – or receptions, I mean. And then, I mean, both the guys are still there. I'm going to actually take Pittman over Harry. Um a lot of people are comparing him to Vincent Jackson. I think that's a great role for him to be compared to. I mean, T.Y. Hilton is probably his last year. Um, Pittman, just a big body receiver, able to get it up. Paris Campbell in the slot. I mean, you have Phillip Rivers there too, so Phillip Rivers is going to be able to air it out to him. I, I like Pittman here a lot, so I think Pittman's a good pick here. Back to Texas. Oh, I was not ready for that. <laughs> Man. Um, you got some good options. Hold on, OJ Howard. Did OJ Howard go before Gronk? He did. Interesting. If okay, so I think the, it's banking on a trade probably. If I hadn't have taken Tyler Boyd earlier, I might be looking at T Higgins right now, but I'm not. Because <laughs> Cause if you had Sanders and Thomas, and then you had Higgins and Boyd, that'd be hilarious. Um, there's man. some good guys still on here. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to decide. If you guys I'm, haven't used this site before, um, viewers and you guys, at the end of the draft, they will give you a grade on how they see your draft panning out. Hey. So, um, obviously, I'll, I'll, the viewers can decide as well, but that's going to help us a lot towards the end. I'm interested to see what they give Miller. Maybe they, maybe <laughs> Miller gets like a 99. Miller's going to have – yeah, Miller's going to have that draft where everyone is like, you know, what the – you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then everyone, and then after it's like, oh, it was like a 95 graded draft. <laughs> okay. well, right. Hey, what do we know? Who, who, uh, who are you between right now? I'm just trying to look at the wide receivers list, man. And there's nobody that I'm that's really catching my eye right now. I mean, now. these are really just guys that you're going to fill in on bye weeks or great matchups, you know? Or flyers. Maybe. There's, I'm going to be honest. I, I see about four guys that I really like without even having to scroll down. I like the wide receivers more right now than the running backs. I'll tell you that. Oh, uh, yeah, down. You just because know, this is a team that I don't have yet. Um, that's a good. That's a good spot to be in. If you don't have them yet, you got to fill that spot. Not in love with that pick. It, he's a number two. Yeah, not, you know when he didn't really perform a whole 
lot last year. Like people drafted him. I think he was a little bit higher last year. And like a lot of people think, you know, like he was going to be the main guy there. And he just really didn't do a lot. DJ Chark was like, like far and away the number one. So I just, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Did you have a wide receiver you, you're happy that he didn't take? Yeah. I just – I know I need – so the way my roster is right now, there's four bench spots left. I want one wide receiver, one running back, one tight end, one quarterback. Obviously, you get backups everywhere. Yeah. Thing is, with running backs, you've got all running back twos and threes left. I mean, it is just brutal, the running back spot. I mean, there's guys I like for sure. Um, and probably just – I mean, Chase Edmonds – it's a guy I really like if, you know, King and Drake gets hurt or, mm-hmm. you know, if Chase Edmonds just steals a spot, to be honest, because you saw Chase Edmonds in that, like, one game he really got to start last year, and he just balled out. But then they traded for Kenny and Drake, and then, he, then Kenny and Drake took the load. So I like Edmonds, but it's really dependent on if Drake gets hurt, which you never hope for, and I never would want to do that. I like Justin Jackson a lot as a handcuff to Austin Eckler for me. But they also have um, Josh McKelly, who they just drafted out of UCLA. So that's you know, that's tough. It, it, it's just really interesting at the running back spot. Rashad Penny, another handcuffed guy. So I'm probably going to go receiver. I mean, you have another pick too, so it's – Yeah. I mean, yeah, I got plenty of picks left. It's just I just know there's receivers here I like. I really like Sammy Watkins if he doesn't get hurt. Uh, but I like him in Kansas City a lot. He looked good last year. And he's going to be playing for money this year. It's true. He, he, he said he wanted to be a wide receiver one before he ended up going back to Kansas City. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, he can put up numbers like that. So, he's a good receiver. But here's the thing. I like <laughs> T. Higgins a lot. I really like Brandon Ayuk. I really like Brandon Ayuk in San Francisco. I have a lot of rookie receivers. I don't know if I can take that risk there. So, I'm going to take Sammy Watkins. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I've already got two rookie receivers. You know, it, it's cool to have fun with your rookies, but you also want to make sure you have backup second you know could produce and have produced in the past. So good to have yeah. fun. So now you you got these three positions left. I mean, yeah. there's still a lot to go. I mean, where where are you thinking right now? I mean, your boy Gronk is still on the board. That's a guy that you were looking yeah, for. Honestly, tight end. I'm just gonna make sure my bye weeks are here correctly. Higby's a bye week nine. Gronk's bye week thirteen. Not gonna probably want to start Gronk anyway, since he's gonna be my backup. Those are the bye weeks I was talking about too. The guys that are in thirteen. Thirteen, yeah. And you know, if Gronk's by week thirteen, just hopefully Higby's not hurt. You know, but yeah, exactly. Gronk's set to be my backup tight end. Realistically, I'm only gonna match play him with matchups, and when Higby has a bye week. So I, I, I mean, I told you I wanted Gronk in my first tight end pick, and he was there. By the time I wanted to take my second, so it ended up being a good pick taking Higby because I can get Gronk later. Miller, I mean, this is where you're going to shine in the draft. Let's let's see these last three for you. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, I'm just going to take a flyer here and just, just you know, you, you never know. You never know. I'm going to take Joe Burrow. Okay. Dude, dude I, this guy. I'm not mad at it. Especially Mahomes had some injury concerns last year. Burrow, hopefully by the time that if Mahomes does have to miss a game or two, I, yeah. I don't I don't hate the pick at all. What I do you know, hate is Nick, Nikhil Harry going a pick right before me. That hurts. You know what I hate about Miller's pick is that Alabama fandom is absolutely abandoned there. He goes with the man that slaughtered the tide all season long over his boy Tua. I'm weak. I end up going with Jamal Williams. You know Williams where the loyalty's here. at. Yeah, exactly. I'm going with Jamal Williams just because, one, the handcuff for Aaron Jones. Um, I don't have Aaron Jones, but I think that if Aaron Jones goes down, like you said, good trade position. And also Jamal Williams has been able to hold his own, even with Jones there. Um, I know they draft A.J. Dillon, so there's going to be a little bit of discrepancy. But, I mean, we've, made, we've seen Williams make some good catches. We've seen him take over for Aaron Jones sometimes. So, I mean, to get him this late, I think it's one of the best backups I can get over, you know, Jalen Rashard or Darrington Evans, et cetera. Um, Darrington Evans has probably been the next guy I would have looked at, but. Ah oh, man, now I got two more picks. I have a, I have people in mind for both of them. With Daniel Jones there, he had some injury concerns, so I probably should take another quarterback. 
I mean, I have one, two, three, f- I have six running backs and five receivers, which is a little backwards. But man, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go with a guy who, Oh, actually, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know which one of these guys I should take. I'm between two dudes here. I'm really hoping you just don't take the guy I want. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, here's the thing. My plan here was to go quarterback and tight end, right? Because I'm, I'm going to say right now, I'm not going to go tight end. I want to go Blake Jarwin with my last pick, but I'm not going to go with him. I'm going to – I'll save him for a free agent pickup if I need it. Um, I'm going to go receiver and quarterback in these last two. Now, I'm not in love with Matt Stafford at the top. I'm not in love with Baker Mayfield. So I'm okay with waiting another round. So I'm going with receiver and the two I'm between, obviously I, have to, I know these guys aren't going to both here, be here next round. Most likely I'm between Corey Davis and Tyrell Williams. Tyrell Williams was a touchdown machine for me last year, played very well, but Corey Davis, now that he has an actual competent quarterback for a full year might be a lot better. If I'm you, I'm taking Tyrell. The, the thing that worries me about Tyrell, though, is that, like, once once Renfro started playing better and Waller started Oakland. playing better, it seemed yeah, like Oakland. they intentionally stopped throwing to him. Even though he I, did didn't, forget, I did forget Oakland did draft three receivers. Yeah, after. I mean, they're listing Lynn Bowden as a running back, which is good, but they just have so many weapons. They signed yeah. Aguilar. They drafted two receivers. You know, like, good even though I feel like Tyrell is in an repl- unreplaceable role. He's a big-body receiver. He's able to get those 50-50s. I just I, – I wouldn't feel comfortable starting him ever, you know? That's what, that's what worries me. Could, you could take Renfro here. I could take Renfro. He's a little bit higher. Um, I really like Perriman in New York as well. I think that he had a good year with the Buccaneers. So, for him to be a number three um, behind Mims and Crowder, in my opinion, I think is going to be very good. I mean, even Larry Legend's up there still. You know, this is a guy who is always going to be – T.A. There's actually a lot of great receivers left. Ayuk. I know. Ayuk's there. That was the guy I'm looking at. I'm going to go with – Ooh, I'm not going to go Tyrell because that scares me. I think I'm going to go with a guy who's at least proven that, you know, touchdowns aren't his thing, but at least, you know, he puts up 600. I, I'm going Corey Davis. I, I'm, I'm banking on him first round, you know, top 10 pick at one point. Yeah. I mean, he's got an actual great quarterback who got paid like it. There's no way – now A.J. Brown's going to get double covered instead of him being the only receiver there. I think it's going to do a lot for him. So, I like I, that. I hate the CPUs that we are drafting with, man. Were you, were you a John Ross guy? No, I was a big little Geo, Giovanni Bernard guy. Oh, little Geo in case, guy. In case if Joe Main Mixon – love me some Joe Mixon, but I think he's going to hold out yeah. at least for a little bit. Giovanni Bernard is a very, very solid option to have for the few weeks if Mixon is out. And if Mixon decides to not come back, which probably won't happen, um, then you got him and you got him there. So it's just a good guy to have. But I mean, Miller, you have the world in the palm of your hands right now. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna go back up tight end. Okay. Um I'm There's gonna take a guy, I'm gonna take a guy that's on the same team as the one you just picked from. Who did I pick from 10? Okay. Second John. Yes, he had an amazing playoff run. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And His I mean, touchdown that was that against it was against the Ravens, I think, in the back of the end zone when he just absolutely mossed that defender and put it all, oh, dude. Well, and I, I think what, uh, did De, I think I might be wrong. Um, did Delaney Walker retire or did he go he, to a different? He didn't retire, but nobody signed him, so he's probably going to retire. Okay. So, um, yeah. That's what I was banking on. I think at this point in the draft, if you're getting a backup tight end, which most people probably are, with the with the guy, fuck, with the guys that are still here, I think John Smith, Hayden Hurst, and Blake Jarwin all have huge upsides this year. I mean, Hayden Hurst taking over for Hooper, John Smith taking over for Delaney, and Blake Jarwin taking over for Witten, they're all ready to step into the light. So one of them, if not all three of them, can have great years. So. Um, Griff, I mean, you already got your tight end, you got your receiver, so you're going quarterback or running back here, if I remember correctly. Yep, and I'm going running back, and just gotta make sure my bye weeks are. I like I like three guys here at least. Right. I think I think you two will like this pick especially, and that that probably gives it away. I'm gonna draft Beyond Lewis. I do. I like the pick. Um, I mean, say obviously he is behind Saquon, and that's probably one of the toughest positions to be in, but. 
Deion Lewis is a guy, is a veteran that you know can produce. And I'm pretty sure when the Giants will be losing one of their many games this year, they will have to be passing a lot. And Deion Lewis is a good pass catcher. So when Barkley needs a quick breather, you know he's going to be in there on passing downs for sure. I think so. also you got to look at the fact that, you know, we can't handle another Saquon injury. So yeah. they need to give him the time. Unless we're – I mean, last year they rushed him back because we were 2-2 two and two at the point where he got injured. So it was like – it's like, oh, we need to get him back so we can get back on track. Obviously it didn't work out like that. But now if an injury were to happen to Saquon, that's your franchise guy, number two overall pick. You got to protect him. You have Deion Lewis there. I mean, it's a, it's a – it's a safe pick and worst comes to worst you cut him week one for a guy who was good on the waiver wire you spent some fab on him you know exactly so now i mean two quarterbacks just went before you so were one of those guys somebody you were looking at or no no um i think you're getting baker intrigues me um but yeah i i'm just i i still believe in baker i think what we saw in his rookie year is something that we could see again. I just, his offensive line is so bad. And it's, it's just, it's just tough. He got a lot he better. Got great weapons. Huh? I said it did get a lot better, but I think a lot of people yeah. are, I think here's the thing. I think Conklin is a better Nate Solder for where he's going to get a big payday because there's no offensive lineman near his talent. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be worth that money. So a lot of people are saying they got Conklin, they got Conklin. And yes, he was great, but also you could have four Aaron Donalds try and tackle Derrick Henry and they probably can't do it. So even if he was running through, he could run through everybody. So I think that, you know, Baker's has a – it can't get worse than any line he's had before, but I don't know if it's a, such a step up as they're trying to make it, you know? Yeah. Oh, man, a quarterback, this is tough. Really I, like, I like your guy. I'm going to be honest with you. Kirk? He was a top 10 guy last year, you know? And yeah, I mean, he's – I mean, if you want upside, Fantasy you're definitely going to – I mean, 3,600 yards, 26 touchdowns is good. Only six picks is something you really like to see. And, I mean, he's honestly just the best guy here. I mean, I don't think I don't think Ryan Tannehill is going to do what he did last year. I say the only other thing I would even look at is Phil Rivers because you know he's going to air it the hell out. Jared, Jared Goff can – he's got the yards. I mean, everyone – Everyone's like, oh, I mean, I don't like Jared Goff. Actually, there's a guy I really like here. And am I supposed to be going quarterback? I am. So I'm not telling you. But I like a guy here. But Philip Rivers, like you said, slinging around, Drew Locke, good upside. I'm probably just going to go Kirk Cousins here. It's backup quarterback. Yeah. You can get him on the waiver wire at any point. Now, mind you, if I was in a deeper league where I was like keepers and stuff like that, if Tua is at this pick, which he probably wouldn't be in leagues where you're having keepers, oh, I'm taking Tua. 100%. Yeah. So this is a league where it's not keepers. You just need a backup to start one week. You might as well just get the best guy you think there. I'm just going to take Kirk. Yeah, and with how our keeper rules are, it's it's around above their ADP. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, even – like getting Tua, you'd have to keep him the whole year, and next year his ADP might be round five, you know. So then it's like, it's like okay, you're not going to spend a fourth rounder unless you really want it, you know. Yeah. So – um, I mean, Miller, surprise us. That's all I can really say. Surprise us. <laughs> In right. I'll try my best. I mean, there's still uh, – there's best available players. That's really all I'd be looking at, but. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I tried my best to surprise you, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, Ty- uh, Tyrell's still on the board. Larry's on the board. Kenny Stills, Brandon Ayuk, Josh Reynolds. I think I'm just going to keep it in Arizona. Take a legend? Yeah. I'm not mad at it. You know he's going to at least get some PPR. And the guy I want, and I'm very happy to have, especially as my backup, maybe if Daniel Jones has a bad matchup, I can put him in right away. Even though there's a lot of quarterbacks that are going to go on draft that are very good, I'm taking Teddy B. Um Oh, Dude, dumping oh, it off to McCaffrey, dumping it off to McCaffrey for fucking eighty points a game. I mean, how are you gonna pass up on that? You know? What'd you guys get as a grade? Uh, so I got eighty six out of a hundred. Wow, I got a seventy seven out of a hundred. Okay, Miller ninety seven. What'd you get? I got a seventy three. I'm barely passing. Okay, he's barely passed. So I I was way better than all of you somehow, which is really cool. Um. <laughs> I'm going to look at these projected standings. Hold on. I want to see this. Yeah, let's check out the projected standings. Let's see where we're at. Well, Miller and I are right next to each other, 10 and 11. You know? Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to be finishing in pick, in uh, in fifth, so I'm in the playoffs. I made the playoffs. That's good. 
Based off my st- – I like this, though. Based off my starters, I'm the fourth best. Yeah, that's – your bench just is the worst. 79. My bench is a, yeah, <laughs> a lot of flyers, a lot of got unproven guys. But that's what the bench is for, I think. My starting lineup is pretty very solid, though. Very, I mean, it's over 80% of my team's points, projected points. So, hopefully we can, uh, you know, get some solid – Get some solid production from the starters. Say like it. So, I mean, just looking at the end of it, um, looking at the teams here. So, we have Mahomes, Russell Wilson, and Daniel Jones being our quarterbacks. Um, Griffin's running backs ended up being Austin Eckler and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Miller with Zeke and Le'Veon, really good tandem there. I had Chubb and Melvin Gordon. Head over to the starting receivers. You got Thomas, Devontae Parker, and Diggs for Griffin, Mike Evans, Tyler Boyd, and Marvin Jones for Miller McKaney. Then we got Tyreek Hill, DJ Shark, and DK Metcalf. For me, first off, does anyone ever like question DK? Like, the only DK we ever know is Donkey Kong, <laughs> and like that's such like a weird like I've never seen that before kind of thing. I mean, we just kind of all go with it, but um, yeah. I mean, tight end Tyler Higby, Noah Fant, Austin Hooper, then we got in our flexes Keyshawn Vaughn and Ronald Jones. That's probably where they got you with your guys. I don't think Ronald Jones would be there. I'd probably be Jerry Judy for you. Um, yeah. yeah. And also, it literally – we talked about cuffs. It literally says on Keyshawn Vaughn's, like, square, cuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. just cuff him, please. So Exactly. So, then yeah. we had James White and Emmanuel Sanders for Miller, and then I had David Johnson and Sonny Michelle for me. Um, overall, I mean, I don't think any of our team – here's the thing. The draft, it doesn't really matter about the draft. It's about trading and using your fab in the year to get where you are. I mean – no one should end with their draft team unless they didn't play in the league. That's, that's all I say. Um, so, I mean, I thought, I mean, we did pretty good. So according to fantasy pros, I won the draft. Uh, anybody, anybody that wants to let, let us know what you think in the comments below who won the draft, um, who had the better draft here. Um, but of course, if you guys are new to the channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. Turn notifications on so you can get a notification anytime we upload a video. Do fantasy football, NFL content, Madden, rebuilds, all kind of stuff going on throughout this whole offseason. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. If you didn't, just refresh that page. Check it out again. Let me know what you think a second time. And without further ado, that is going to be for me, Griffin, and Miller. And we'll see you guys the next time.